Hey everyone, welcome to a very special episode of Mitch in the Kitch. Today I'm representing Kodiak in a charity challenge. It's Team Flapjack versus Team Waffle. I am Team Flapjack. I've got this awesome skillet. Thank you to the Kodiak guys for sending that out. We're gonna have a winning dish with this, so I'm excited to show you how. The dish I'm cooking up is buttermilk flapjacks with a blueberry and blackberry compote, homemade whipped cream, and some fresh berries over the top. These are all the ingredients. It's not that much. It sounds more impressive than it is, but it's a really simple dish. Let's get to it. First, we're gonna start with the compote. So I've got one cup each of fresh blueberries and fresh blackberries. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar, a little bit of lime zest. Lime zest, you could use lemon as well. And we've got some lime juice as well, a couple tablespoons. And the last ingredient is gonna be a little bit of water. So first things first, we'll get the berries into the pan. You add a little bit of water. The berries are gonna give off some of their own liquid once they start cooking down. So just a little bit to start, mainly to help dissolve the sugar. So the sugar goes in next. And now with your berries, you know, they're gonna vary every package to every package based on how sweet they are, how tart they are. We have a quarter cup. I had probably three tablespoons of that to start. And we're gonna hold off on the rest because we just wanna make sure we don't get it too sweet. It's a little bit difficult to take the sugar out if you add too much. It's a lot easier to add sugar as you go. All right, so give this a mix. And then add the lime zest. This is the zest of about a half of a lime. I'm not gonna add all of it right now. I don't wanna overpower it, especially because we have some lime juice coming as well. I'm gonna add probably half of that to start with. We'll taste it as we go. We'll make sure it's tasting good. For the same effect, we have two tablespoons of lime juice. I'm just gonna add one at the beginning. Again, don't wanna overpower it with the citrus. And also it is nice to have a little bit of kick of kind of a bright, fresh citrus at the end. So once this is done, once we cut the heat, we'll add a little bit more, kind of bring the dish all together. Our water is starting to boil. That's what we want to see. And the berries, as they cook, they'll start to break down. You don't necessarily have to go and start smashing them right away. Uh, the berries, as the heat, will definitely break down, will start to loosen. And then from there, it's just gonna be tasting, seeing how it is, boiling it down to the consistency that you want as well. Obviously, as you boil, some of the water is gonna get evaporated. It's gonna become thicker. And once you cut the heat, it's gonna to come together a little bit more as well. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. You're not necessarily gonna taste the salt, but the salt does help bring out some of those flavors as well. It really creates a more well-rounded dish in the end. So we can see already some of the blueberries are starting to burst. The liquid has turned a really dark color. It looks awesome. Kind of looks like wine a little bit, maybe not quite as a full, not quite a full wine, but we're gonna keep mixing that up. And these are off to a good start. So the berries are cooking away. They're gonna simmer for 10 or 15 minutes. They're gonna keep breaking down. We're gonna start smashing them together. It's gonna to thicken up. Then we're gonna give it a taste, see how we're doing. But in the meantime, let's get the flapjacks built. So we got some Kodiak flapjack mix. We got two cups of it here. We're gonna add some milk with it. You could use water. You could do milk plus egg. Today, we're just doing milk. Just going off the package instructions. Kodiak makes it really easy. One cup to three quarters of a cup. We're doubling that. Two cups, one and a half cups. And with the milk, these flapjacks are awesome, I've always loved them. It's really nice to get some extra protein, especially with breakfast. You know, typically with breakfast, you're thinking protein, you know, bacon, ham, something a little fattier. It's nice to be able to get some good protein in the carbs that you're eating. Milk over water gives us a little bit more as well. So I'm gonna give this a mix. I think that looks pretty good. It's looking pretty thick already. If we need to add a little bit more milk down the road, we will, but I don't mind a nice thick flapjack. So we're gonna leave that right there. Flapjacks are mixed. We're gonna wait for the berries to come along a little bit more and then we'll get to cooking. This is the fun part, getting to actually smash the berries. So they are cooking down, they're getting warm, they're getting soft. You know, these blueberries are just falling right apart too if you give them a nice little poke. And at this point, you can see we've been simmering for three, four, five minutes. There's so much more liquid in the pan right now. That's because those berries have all that juice. And as the heat, they're breaking down, they're releasing some of the juices that's gonna get thickened down to create that really good compote. The compote is boiling away. The flapjacks are mixed, they're ready to go. Now it's time to move on to the whipped cream. So I have a stand mixer. You could use an immersion blender with the whisk attachment. 
if you're you know, really strong, filling up on that protein, you can go ahead and hand whisk it. Uh, that's not for the faint of heart, so if you're doing that, make sure you know what you're in for. But for me, we're going with the stand mixer today. I'm gonna make it nice and easy. We have just some heavy whipping cream. Colder is better, just keep it in the fridge. This is a pint, which is two cups. It's gonna make a lot of whipped cream for us, which I absolutely love. So, in. Our whipping cream is in. We're gonna add, this is a quarter cup of sugar. I'm gonna add half of it to start. I kinda like to taste as I go, season as I go. So I don't wanna make it overbearing with the sweetness again. The sugar, if you don't use it, something will be wrong. You won't quite know what. Uh, so trust me, you do have to add some sweetness to it. Otherwise things will get a little bit weird. And lastly, vanilla. So we're gonna add some, probably about a tablespoon or so. You can go less, you can go more, you can add any other flavoring you want. But for me, vanilla, whipped cream, you can't go wrong. And then start it at a pretty low setting. And you don't want cream flying everywhere. So you're gonna start it low. Okay, so it's been whipping for about a minute or two. It has started to get thicker, so we can increase the speed on that. We shut this down for a second. It is getting a lot thicker. I wanna see how we're doing. Yes, yeah, so you can see not much came up with the whisk, so it's definitely not ready yet. Need to give it a little bit more, but now we're just tasting for that extra sweetness. Oh, wow. That's really good. I'm gonna add just the slightest bit of sugar. Not too much, because it is right about where we want it to be. The vanilla is definitely not overpowering, that's for sure. All right, so a little bit more. Probably two tablespoons, two and a half at this point. Lock it in, get to one last mix. It's coming together. So at this point, it's kind of how thick and textured you want it. You know, if you come out and you do a little scoop like this, you do get some good body. You know, it's not necessarily falling over on itself. I'm gonna give it maybe 30 more seconds and I think we'll be perfect. Doing this backwards is the, for the first time. All right, whipped cream looks awesome and I haven't given the compote a stir in a little, so I wanna make sure to do that. You know, there is all that sugar. In the berries, we added some sugar. Just wanna make sure things aren't burning or sticking, and they're not because we have so much liquid. Okay, whipped cream is done. I'm gonna get this in the fridge for now. I wanna make sure it stays cold. I wanna make sure all that air that we whipped into it stays in there. It is whipped cream after all. Before we get started on the flapjacks, I do wanna taste the compote. I wanna see where we're at, how we're doing. Let's get a little bit of berry in there. It's gonna be hot. Wow. I like the sweetness. I don't think we need to add any more sugar to this. The sweetness is excellent. And add a little bit more of the lime zest. And I know in the back of my mind, we're gonna add some of that fresh lime juice at the end. So I know that's coming as well. But this tastes so good. So this combo is looking good. It's tasting good. I think I'm gonna call this as done, believe it or not. Uh, we do still have to make the flapjacks. So I know it's gonna thicken up on us a little bit, start to come together. It looks really good. You could serve this as is right away. But since I know it'll sit just a little bit, I'm gonna call it, looks good. Add a little bit more of that lime juice, like I said. Probably not too much. Maybe just a teaspoon of that. Mix it together and get a lid on it. Put it back there, let it hang out while we make some flapjacks. Okay, so this is preheated. It's about 300, 325. If you're gonna err on the side of too much heat, not enough. I tend to err on the side of not enough. I can always crank the temperature, but for me, I don't love that really thick, crusty exterior of flapjack. I like it soft and delicious. So, butter. You can't do flapjacks without butter. And you can see this is nicely preheated. And for me, I'm a big dude, so I like to make big old flapjacks. You can see the butter still frothing around the outside. You can see some of the bubbles up from the flapjack already. So we're gonna give this a couple more minutes, then we're gonna flip. All right, so we're getting close to flipping time. The exterior is definitely starting to get set. You're starting to see some bubbles up from the interior. You're gonna go underneath, gonna give it a peek. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A nice wide spatula and flip. All right, let's see here. See, slides under nicely. Oh yeah. That looks really good. So, we got one down. I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest. When we're done, I'm gonna show you how to assemble and of course, how to eat. Okay, now we have everything we need to assemble. We've got three beautiful Kodiak flapjacks. We've got the whipped cream, blueberry, blackberry compote, a little bit of that lime zest and lime juice. Got some fresh berries, black and blue, strawberry, raspberry. Let's get to assembling and most importantly, eating. So triple stack, we're gonna do this right on the cutting board, because why not? All right, next up, thinking it through, probably go with some compote. Right in the middle. Keep going. Let me get some of the juice around there too. And then whipped cream. Nothing elegant here. No piping bags, nothing crazy. Just got a big spoon and a big appetite. So, right in the middle. Oh yeah. Now that looks delicious. Let me go in with a few of the fresh berries, raspberries, and I'm just gonna place them there in front. Don't wanna mess with my whipped cream, you know? Get some red color in there. All right, now for some blueberry and blackberry. These are going on top just to reinforce that's what's actually in the compote. You know, sometimes it's nice to visually kind of understand what's in there. So some berries. This is the good part, this is where we get to eat. This looks almost too good to eat, but you know what? It's meant to be eaten. So clear the deck a little bit and flip it around. Cut me off a nice good center cut piece. Tons of whipped cream, tons of compote, some fresh berries. Let's see how we did. Oh man, this is exciting. That is so good. Yeah, the first thing I'm getting, you're obviously getting the texture of the flapjack. It's fluffy, it's tasty, but the compote is what puts it over the top. And with that, you get the sweetness, you get the berries, but you're also getting a little bit of the tartness of the lime. I'm really glad we added a little bit more lime juice at the end. You're getting that kind of bright punch of acid. It tastes so good. That is excellent. If that doesn't win this challenge, someone must have brought the heat because that is fantastic. Thanks for tuning in to this special Mitch in the Kitchen episode. It's the first one in the new house. It's a charity challenge for Kodiak. Team Flapjack, I think we sealed up a victory. So thanks for watching the winning recipe. We'll see you next time.